Hello there, everyone. How are you doing today? I hope you're all well. Today we're going into r slash ask reddit, where reddit's asking, Bill Gates said, I will always choose a lazy person to do a difficult job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. What's a real life example of this? And we're going to go through reddit's response to it. If you enjoy, like and subscribe, leave a comment with your stories down below. Who knows, I might read them off in a future video. Now, without further ado, let's get started, shall we? I was working as a stock boy in a supermarket, and when we had to fill the milk cooler, people would just bust open a 12-pack of milk and put them in one by one. On my first day, I just placed the 12-pack in the cooler and cut the plastic off on one side with my box cutter and yanked it from under it, and the look of the store manager and the other employees who was training me was pure bewilderment. From that day on, everyone did it my way. <laughs> Worked as a laborer at a nursery one summer. Daily tasks included manually watering 15,000 plants each day. Put together the back of a napkin to plan to build an irrigation system. And spent the next few weeks building it with some money from the boss. The system is still running 15 years later and does all the work now. I did automate myself out of the job and had to find another eventually. A couple years later, I got my engineering degree. I'm convinced engineers are inherently lazy people that will spend a disproportionate effort to make things easier. Honestly, that story could go into r slash anti-work as well. Like, he did something for his job that was good for the job, and it got him fired. The hell. My brother-in-law spent a whole summer trying to figure out how to fix his sagging deck at the lake, which he could, in theory, crawl under and jack it up. It would have been a tunneling project. It's a 60 by 60 area, all long 2 by 6 boards. Massive. I sat there long enough with enough beers in me to come up with the idea of cutting a square out of the sagging area, about three feet by three feet, jacking it up, then screwing down the boards. He paints the thing every spring with a roller anyhow, so it's not like the square cut shows up. He thought I was a genius. I was just lazy. We had to hold the thermometer in water in chemistry class. It was probably only 20 minute experience, but your arms got tired after a couple of minutes. And you can't let the thermometer touch the bottom of the pan or you won't get an accurate reading. So instead of sucking it up and just holding the thermometer, my lab partner built a contraption out of lab books and paper clips to somehow hold the thermometer in the water without it touching the bottom. It was the stupidest looking thing you would ever see in a lab class. And our professor even walked over and said, If it looks stupid, sounds stupid, but it works, it ain't stupid. My lab partner and I joked that he wasn't talking about the contraption, but the intellect of my lab partner. I had a math teacher that actively encouraged his students to be as lazy as possible, defining lazy as actively searching for ways to do the least amount of work as possible. His logic was that, the way math is now, it could always be simplified and still work the same. Someone just needs to be lazy enough to find that. I was a paid intern at a large company doing one summer back home from college. My work, 95%, consisted of SAP, import to Excel, clean data, and generate reports. Occasionally create some tools someone needed. In the first two weeks after getting a hang of my responsibilities, writing all the Excel formulas needed, 
and basically automating 99% of my work. I was just chilling. I went from actually working a 9 to 5 to maybe 1 hour tops a day. Finding, importing, cleaning, and reporting usually took hours, but with all the formulas, it just took two minutes of clicking. I then helped the other cool intern get his stuff set up so we could both just chill. We could take two-hour lunches, paid for by the company, and nobody said anything because we were just getting so much more work done than the other interns. Of course, I helped for special tasks when asked, but... Those were simple 20-minute tasks, building something in Excel. Overall, it was the easiest, stressless internship of my life. One of my favorite examples is Andy Kim, and I'd like to preface this by saying that I don't think Kim is lazy so much as a genius. Andrew Yuba Kim was a singer-slash-songwriter who became famous under the stage name Andy Kim. He achieved success writing songs for bands like the Archies, possibly most notably Sugar Sugar. After his success, he coasted for a while until his record label dropped him for lack of output. At that point, he created his own label and cranked out hits like Rock Me Gently. When they saw this, the big record labels then bought his label under the assumption that they would then profit off the songs he wrote and performed. He then very shortly stopped writing songs and largely lived off the sale of his label. Work smarter, not harder. When Carl Friedrich Gauss, the famous German mathematician and physicist, was in elementary school around 1784, his class was assigned busy work task of adding all the numbers from 1 to 100, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, and so on. This usually kept the class quiet for half an hour or so. Seven-year-old Carl was just sitting quietly with his correct answer, 5,050, while the rest of the class was just starting. So the surprised teacher asked him how he came up with the solution. He replied that he added 1 and 100 and got 101. Then he added 2 and 99 and got 101. Plus 98, 3 plus 98, 101, and so on. He realized there was a pattern of 50 pairs of numbers with each pair, adding up to 101. And 50 times 101 was 5,050. Honestly, I did this in my class a lot. Like, one time, it, this is my own personal story, by the way. I was in math class doing my work. I hated showing my work. One of the few times I actually bothered to show it, I showed it to the teacher afterwards. She's like, that's not the right formula or anywhere how you should do that. But somehow, it's right. She was a good teacher, though. I really do appreciate it. Ms. Tesla Swartz, if you're out there somewhere, I appreciate you. You were a great teacher. When I was in college, I had a job at an Italian fast food place with a reputation for its breadsticks. They came in frozen and needed a bit to thaw, so we'd take a giant 3x4-foot aluminum baking sheet, spread them out over a single layer with no spaces, and cover it with a plastic bag, and then let it sit in the walk-in overnight. The next day, you'd have to get a pair of tongs and move each stick to a new tray, turning them over, then cover the new tray with the bag and let them sit on racks for a couple of hours before brushing on the garlic butter sauce. This was tedious enough that you'd usually be ready to brush the butter on the first tray as soon as you turned the last tray. I was given this task for the first time one morning and just did not want to deal with it. I realized that if I put the second tray upside down on top of the first one and then turned it over and took the first tray out, I got exactly the same results. It blew the boss's mind, and when I did the three-hour job in about 15 minutes, 
I was given five cents an hour raise. Wonderful. An entire five cents. Olive Garden, is that you? I was once set to test a certain piece of equipment on a ship. The test involved attaching a unit to a reader, then run loads of command line commands. Then one would have to make a copy of all the text, copy it into Word, and save it as a real crappy looking report. There was hundreds of units, and they needed to be tested several times a year. We did about 20 to 30 a day. It would take several weeks to finish. I didn't know coding at the time, but I always wanted to learn it. Within two months, I had made a program, even with a GY, to spot faults with ease instead of having to actually read the reports. The program could read three units at a time, and it would automatically create a smooth PDF report and save it on our server, named with the serial number and date. The job was now to attach three units, then wait about three minutes. Detach and attach new ones. Basically, 30 seconds work, three minutes break. I could now test all units in a day, though I would typically spread it out over a couple more days. When I left the company, I left the program on the test computer. I got an email from an ex-colleague a few months later, saying they were using the program on several ships now. There wasn't any manual for the program, of course, but it was so straightforward that it wasn't needed. I plug the clocks in at midnight so they're already set. An older company had a person dedicated to data entry, which boiled down to copying and pasting portions of data from text files into spreadsheet and formatting into a report. The person originally doing the job spent a full 40 hours a week doing it, but was not very computer literate. When they retired, the company hired someone with actual skills. The new hire convinced management to let her work remotely after getting up to speed on the job. The first week at home was spent automating the entire job. The remainder of their multi-year tenure with the company was spent doing whatever they wanted save the 10-15 to 15 minutes weekly to run their program, and answer the odd email here and there, all while getting paid full salary and benefits. They actually had to add in a few errors now and then to make it seem realistic. I worked in a local adult education center. One of my main tasks was to make calculations about how many people enlisted for a course. How many of them got discounts, unemployment and such? How many men, women, and what are their age, etc.? That was needed to calculate upcoming course fees, etc. That was my only work there, and I hated it. This was in the early 90s, so PCs were a thing in our offices, but I had no idea how to write a program or use a database to use this information. Lucky, as I am in our center and had an interesting policy. When you want to educate yourself, you can attend that class for free. And when it's during the work time, then this is work time. As long as my supervisor is okay with that, and she was. So I spent three months studying database structures, scripting, coding, etc., I told my tutor what I want to do, and he helped me write a script that grabs all necessary information from the course's database and copy that into another database. And then I went crazy and wrote code that was insane. I implemented what-if scenarios thanks to filters. At the end, I was able to do all the necessary information and have uh, how many unemployed single parent women does it need to take the cost of that course even. I had everything back then. Now, you want statistics how many single parent disabled foreign women at the age of 80 to 90 are needed for the next two years to keep the orthonology going? Sure, no problem. Clickety-clack, that is done. 
After that, I started PC in the morning, grabbed all the data, ran my script, was done within 15 minutes, and then I read the book I bought from home. At the end of the day, I gave my supervisor several dozens of papers, statistics, predictions, etc., and said, That was a lot of work! and went home. My supervisor was super happy with me because I did so much more now and was super effective. Go, worker! Use program script! It was super effective. That's the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. Remember to like the video by pressing the like button, leaving a comment with your stories or thoughts down below, and just doing the interaction stuff you do on YouTube to help get this video out to more people, cause the algorithm hates me with their entire soul. And I will see you all next time.